6, 2021. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, Commissioner Blanco, could you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Uh, sure. Uh, right hand over your heart and stand if you would like, or if you can. And uh, there's the flag, so uh, ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Blanco. May you please have a roll call? Commissioner Blanco? Here. Commissioner Dickerson? Here. Commissioner Hernandez? Here. Commissioner Seifert? Here. Chair Lopez? Here. Uh, we have some additional information for the Zoom uh, Planning Commission meeting. This is a regular Planning Commission public hearing. Comments should have been submitted to the city staff via email by 3 p.m. this afternoon. Comments, uh, sorry, if you wish to comment on an agenda item, please use the raise hand icon on the Zoom platform. Once you are recognized, you will be unmuted and allowed to comment at the business at hand in the order received. Maximum comment time is three minutes or is otherwise directed by the chair. If you're a colleague and wish to be acknowledged, please raise your hand by dialing star nine and identify yourself when unmuted. Uh, we'll move on to the approval of Planning Commission minutes of December 16th, 2020. Has every commissioner had a chance to read those? And if so, may we have a motion? I move. I second. It's been moved by Commissioner Dickerson, seconded by Commissioner Seifert. May we please have a roll call? <clears throat> Commissioner Dickerson? Aye. Commissioner Seifert? Aye. Commissioner Blanco? Aye. Commissioner Hernandez? Aye. Chair Lopez? Aye. No. The public comment period is next. The public comment period, uh, each member of the audience may address the commission on any subject within the commission's business. Each member of the audience and each subject is limited to a discussion of three minutes or is otherwise directed uh, by the chair. These are for items not on the agenda. Do we have anyone wishing to make a, a public comment? Give it just a few more seconds and I don't see anybody, either panelists or attendees raising their hand. Okay, seeing none, we'll go ahead and move on to um, the first item. But before we go to the first item, some uh, some procedural items uh, to, to note uh, for the agenda. Uh, I will introduce the agenda item and turn it over to staff for the presentation. Once staff's presentation is completed, I will open the agenda item to the commissioners to ask any questions of staff. After all the questions by the commissioner answered, I will open the agenda item to the applicant who will be on as an attendee. I will then ask any commissioner, if any commissioners have any questions of the applicant. Once the commission has asked questions of the applicant, I will open up item to those in favor, against, or neutral toward the agenda item. For the public, please wait to raise your hand until after I have called for public comment on the item and the host will unmute you in the order received. Please remember if you're dialing in, Use the star nine keys to raise your hand. You will have up to three minutes or as otherwise directed by the chair. When the public comment is complete, only the applicant will be able to raise any rebuttal. After the rebuttal and no further questions from the commission, I will close the public hearing and turn the agenda item back to the commission for comments, questions, discussions, or uh, motions. So uh, we'll move on to item number one. And does any, did, did any commissioners have any ex parte communication on this item? No. I see, I see none. Uh, we'll go on to the first item. It's a, it's a continued item, Gonzalez Multifamily Residential Project at 401 West West Street. May we please have a uh, staff report? Okay. Uh, thank you, Chair Lopez. My name is Cody Graybell. I'm an associate planner with the, the City of Santa Maria. And tonight I'm going to be presenting the Gonzalez multifamily development at 403 West Street. Um, this item includes four units and the site has an existing single family residence. So we'd have a total of five units on the property. And the item was introduced to the planning commission at the November 5th study session and was continued from the December 2nd planning commission hearing. Tonight's presentation is gonna include a revised design which addresses um, the setbacks 
as well as um, some more information about drainage that the Planning Commission had requested. So the site's located in the middle of the city. It's between Carmen Lane and West Street to the north and south and um, Thornburg Street and Broadway to the east and west. The site's 0.44 acres in size and it currently contains a single family residence as mentioned before. All of the existing accessory structures have since been demoed and removed from the project site. And there currently is no public right of way and a condition of approval for this project will be the dedication of a right of way. So the site is zoned plan development, medium density residential, and it's surrounded by residential, industrial, commercial, and public facility zoning. So this photo is taken from the corner of Thornburg and West Street. Um, it just further illustrates how there's um, no public right of way um, and the concept and design of the street frontage and of the intersection has been reviewed and approved by the engineering department um, prior to this meeting tonight. So the original site plan, it requested multiple setback reductions from the R2 standards and as requested by the Planning Commission. In the next slide, we're gonna see the revised site plan, which no longer is gonna be requesting these setback reductions. So the first setback reduction was um, at the interior side yard. So typically the R2 zone requires a five foot setback and the applicant had originally requested a four foot setback in order to provide some access for the fire lane and then there also was another request for a two and a half foot setback reduction on the second stories of unit A and B. So typically we'd see five feet here. The original design requested a two and a half foot reduction. And then typically we'd see 15 feet at the corner and the original design requested um, another two and a half foot reduction to 12 and a half feet. And then we have the standard setback of, of 20 feet in the front and 10 feet in the rear. So now this revised design, as mentioned, is going to fully comply with the, the R2 standards as requested by the commission. We now have a five foot interior side yard setback, 15 foot corner yard setback, and then the 20 foot setback in the front and the 10 foot setback in the rear. Um, the design is very similar. There's only some minor changes. The units have got a little bit smaller in order to accommodate the setbacks. So unit A and B, they're still single family residences that are two stories. They're approximately 24 feet high, so they comply with a 30 foot maximum height restriction, and they both still provide two covered parking spaces as required um, by the code. There's still gonna be three bedrooms and um, two and a half bathrooms. And then unit C and D up front is the duplex, and each of those units are also gonna be two stories, three bedrooms, and two and a half bathrooms. Um, in this case, they provide one covered parking space in the garage and then one uncovered parking space in the driveway as re required by our code. And then unit E is just an existing single family residence that will remain. So the original floor plans for unit A and B, they are gonna be changing a little bit. The closet space, which is being shown in the red bubble here, is just gonna move into the bedroom space um, to take away the um, two and a half foot setback reduction request. In terms of the, the layout, the units are still the same from the, um, the original design, which we're gonna see here on the revised floor plan. So the first floor, um, it still has the kitchen, living room and dining room and half bath. And then the second floor contains the three bedrooms and the two full bathrooms, as well as the, the covered deck. Uh, the main difference here now is just the closet space is moved within the bedroom. So the elevations are also going to be changing a little bit um, as a part of this requested redesign. So the primary difference is this rear elevation for units A and B is no longer going to no longer excuse me going to have the um, projection for the closet space, and the false corbels are going to be um, going away as well. So this will just become a flat elevation with a window. And um, the revised design it still uses the same building materials with stucco and the same um, 
roofing material with shingle and um, the, the same architectural features are being carried over with the, the window sills and um, the molding around the entry points. And the, yeah, the duplex, it's also gonna have a change to the, the front elevation. Um, the redesign no longer is gonna, um, you'll notice it'll no longer incorporate um, the second story projection forward. Um, basically the, the front elevation is now gonna be a flat surface and the architect has put in some roof material to help break the elevation. So this is what I was referencing um, in the front here. And we still have the same building materials that are consistent and the same features um, for unit C and D as shown on unit A and B. So there's also some renderings that I'm gonna walk through briefly. They just help um, further show the, the revisions to the design. So this is looking from the corner of West and Thornburg to the Northeast. And unit A here no longer is um, proposing to have the closet projection. This is looking from West Street from the driveway onto the site and it's showing this new roof material being proposed along the front of the duplex. This here is just unit B and it just helps provide a little bit more depth and texture in regard to the features that are um, incorporated onto the building. And then lastly, this is just showing um, the, the project from the neighbor's site down West Street. So this is looking back to the Northwest and it's also showing again that the closet projection is no longer being proposed. And then um, one more item the Planning Commission requested information about was the drainage. So I just wanted to briefly discuss um, the city's requirement for a stormwater control plan. This was submitted with the PD and it requires a demonstration that the design can accommodate a 25 year storm event, which is a public work standard. And also that the runoff volumes equal the pre-development volumes. So um, both of these standards were reviewed and approved by public works department. And if the project is approved, a grading permit will be required and these above standards will again be incorporated into the grading permit and ultimately have to be approved by public works prior to issuance of building permits. So in conclusion, staff recommends that the planning commission by motion approve PD 2019-0013 and U 2020-0001. This concludes my presentation and myself, staff and the applicant are now available for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Cody. Does the commission have any questions for staff? Yeah, I do. I, oh. I can't hold my, I don't know where my hand is. There it is. Commissioner <laughs> Sleeper, go ahead. Okay, <laughs> I'm having a hard time. Uh, I just wondered, uh, Cody, um, thank you. That was, that was a good presentation. I like the changes. Um, it's a good looking project and it suits all the zoning uh, and, and the setback requirements. Uh, the stormwater, uh, was there changes to that? Uh, was there any substantial changes or did that already meet the requirements? I mean, uh, where, was there, I didn't notice a big change. Is there a change? Uh, Commissioner Seifert, uh, there wasn't any changes. It was just, um, an opportunity to provide more info. So, okay. yeah, the design is remaining the same. Okay, and everybody's happy with that? Yeah, Public Works, I, when I spoke with them, they were, you know, reviewed for the, the requirements listed and they determined it does comply. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Seifert. Any other questions for staff uh, from the commission? If not, may we hear from the applicant? Is the applicant on? Cody is, it? oh yeah, Mr. Smith is on. Mr. Smith, go ahead. Yes, hi, thank you, Chair Lopez and commissioners. I appreciate the opportunity tonight to uh, share again our, our project and our revisions that I think um, were uh, well received and uh, well implemented. I, I think, um, yeah, they added to to the project. So the, the um, Two, there are two points I'd like to just clarify regarding the duplex. I, I'm not sure that Cody mentioned that we did narrow the building one foot, and that's how we uh, <clears throat> achieved that setback compliance. And um, the front elevation is not exactly 
flat. We did step back the uh, upper floor to um, help with that tip roof. So we lost a little bit of floor area, but um, I, I think it still works well. And um, I think Cody did hit on the other points very well. Um, and uh, if there's anything I can add to it, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Does, does the commission have any questions of the applicant? I see none. Uh, Mr. Smith, is, is, uh, is a Brian Stanley part of your team? Uh, he is, I believe, a neighbor down the road, down West Street. Okay, and, and we'll we'll get to the to the to the public as soon as we're we're done uh, with this portion of the of the presentation or of, of the item agenda item. Uh, so no questions for the applicant. Uh, if if there are none, I'll go ahead and uh, open this up to to the public. Uh, for those in favor, against, or are neutral on this project. Uh, Mr. Mr. Stanley, please go ahead. You'll, you'll have three minutes. Okay, um, first off, uh, I would like to address the commission as a whole. I don't think you guys at all, at all are listening to the concerns of the community of this, how this project is being built in. Uh, last uh, meeting, we had a number of m individuals from the neighborhood voice concerns and I don't feel like you guys even cared that we had anything to say. Second, uh, there is a retaining wall that is on the property line that's a good six feet tall that's over 40 years old that's going to have three structures built up against it within five feet and I don't think that retaining wall meets any kind of code to support that kind of weight um, and that's a big concern for me because it's gonna affect the property owner next to them if we have a major earthquake that decides to tear down that wall and bring down property with it. Um, because that wall it was built over 40 years ago to a different code specification than there is today. Um, again, there's a problem, there's gonna be a problem with parking, I guarantee it. You guys already kind of addressed the concern of what if some of these units convert their garages into living quarters through permitting, then that pushes overflow into the neighborhood and this neighborhood already has a problem with parking. And again, I just don't feel like you guys are listening to the concerns of the people in this neighborhood. You guys have probably never been in this neighborhood. You don't know anything about this neighborhood and it's quite offensive that you guys are going forward without even listening to the concerns of people in this neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stanley. Any questions of the applicant? I'm sorry, of, of, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I see one more hand going up. Uh, Kathy, Miss Kathy, you'll have uh, three minutes. Uh, yes, uh, my name's Kathleen Stanley. <laughs> I've lived on in this neighborhood since 1960, I've watched the development come up around it. Um, as far as a retaining wall goes, I know when it was put in, there was no earthquake specifications really back then as far as standards and building on top of that retaining wall. And I'm very concerned that not only can the people who live in the units die, but anybody on the outskirts of that can get, get severely injured. And again, with the parking, you, if you're permitting those garages to be turned into units, where are these people going to park? They, they're going to end up in, down in my neighborhood. And that's not fair to any of us down here. And that concludes my, my what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Stanley. Okay. Um, does the commission have any anything that they'd like to address? with respect to any of the comments or uh, have any questions for the for staff or the architect. Uh, I'll just I'll just uh, go ahead, Mr. Seifert. Commissioner Seifert. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I would, I'm not going to rebut the uh, last two comments, but um, I would suggest that uh, 
Uh, I'm sure that we can get someone from the city to check out the retaining wall and if there was a problem with it or if it didn't meet the st standards, <clears throat> that could be addressed when they do the rest of the work. Cody, is that something that uh, is in your field there? Um, yes, Commissioner Seifert. So, um, Mr. Stanley actually contacted me um, expressing this concern and I followed up with Tom Jack, our senior plans examiner in the city. Um, and he explained to me that the design professional um, is going to be required during construction to provide underpinning and protection of the foundation um, prior to construction. They're going to have to have a sequencing plan set up to ensure that this um, retaining wall is supported. And then the plans themselves, you know, of course, are going to have to meet the California building code. Um, a soils report is going to have to be provided. So yeah, we'll be, you know, extra cautious and ensure that there's going to be no impacts to the neighbors as a result um, of this proposal. I appreciate that. Thank you, Cody. Thank you, Cody. Thank you, Commissioner Seifert. Um, Commissioner Blanco. Commissioner Blanco, are you there? You might be muted. I think he's frozen. Uh, okay, well, I just, we'll, we'll come back to Commissioner Blanco when he gets back on. Uh, Cody, could you comment on the reduction of parking spaces if something is converted? Um, maybe, maybe, uh, I mean, it, it's not just this specific project, but it's citywide and that's uh, available to, to property owners, correct? Um, yes, Chair Lopez, that's correct. There's laws from the state of California now for accessory dwelling units um, that the city has to comply with um, and they apply to all residential zones. And, 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 that's, and that's if you do convert a, a required parking area you do not have to replace it. That's what the current state law says, correct? Um, yes, Chair Lopez, that's correct. Okay, so so it's citywide. I just want Mr. Stanley to know that 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 happened. That can happen anywhere in the city, any any um, residential area in the city. Uh, is is thank thank you, um, Cody. Is Commissioner Blanco back? Commissioner Blanco, I see he's on. He's on. Yeah, I apologize. I, I lost uh, my connection just as uh, Commissioner Seifert was finishing his comment. Um, but uh, I, my 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 comment or question was going to be this, I think the same. So I'm, I'm glad I'm glad to hear that um, we're going to be addressing that concern with the retaining wall, um, not only for the neighbors but also for the property itself. Obviously, we want to protect both properties. Um, and it's good to know, I was not aware that that wall was that old. That's really good to know. Um, but certainly good to hear that, um, that, uh, that the building department is looking at that and has already made provisions to address that concern. So, um, in terms of the parking, I think we've talked about the parking before. I don't know that there's any, if there are any questions or anything that we can do to address that. Um, Maybe, maybe that is a question. Is there anything that we can do or is that sort of out of our hands at this point, given given what the applicant is proposing and any requirements that would already be required? Um, you know, parking is an issue citywide, every city. So I don't know that there are any anything that we can do, but is there anything uh, that this project um, would be doing that would that would that would differ from any other proposal that would impact parking. I don't see it. I think we're providing, I think it's providing the appropriate parking on site. I just don't know what else, if anything, could be done. Thank you, Commissioner Blanco. Uh, we, we are still in the public comment portion. I have not closed that yet. I don't see any other hands. Uh, I do see a hand from Mr. Stanley. Mr. Stanley, we typically only do a one time uh, uh, allow a public comment from an individual, a single, a single comment. So uh, we are not seeing any other attendees raising their hands to comment. I will go ahead and close the public comment portion and bring this back to the commission for uh, 
any discussion, comments, or any other questions amongst the commissioners or, or a motion? Chair Lopez, um, we may yeah. also want to um, see if the applicant has any additional comment. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. Um, yeah, the applicant is allowed to rebuttal. Um, Mr. Smith, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, I appreciate the, the uh, invitation, but I think Cody did uh, cover those bases and uh, our engineering team um, is aware of the concern and we are not going to be influencing that retaining wall for our design. Okay, thank you. And yeah, I, I saw on your plans that structural engineers involved, so they'll be looking at that, that retaining wall and the, and the impact of, if any, of the, of the, uh, uh, the new the new structure. All right, thank you. So I'll go ahead and uh, close the public comment period. Bring it back to the commission uh, for any other further discussion, motion, or uh, or comments. I'll, I'll start. I, I I really think this is going to be a, a great um, addition to this area. I have been in this neighborhood uh, quite a bit, actually. Uh, not recently, but I think that this this uh, project will really have a, a, a good presence there on the on the corner as an entrance to the um, uh, what is it Thornburg side. Uh, I, I like it. I'm, I'm think I thank the architect for uh, going ahead and uh, making those changes so that we don't have that encroachment in the in the, in the setbacks. Um, I like the, the style of architecture. I, I think that uh, everything that we requested was answered from the last planning commission meeting. So I, I, I like the project. Anyone else going to make a comment or Commissioner Seifert? Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm with you, Chair. Uh, I, I think that the changes to this is going to make this a very successful project. Um, it's long time. It's long overdue that that street uh gets uh, gets redone i've driven by it for years driven by the whole area for years um it'll be nice it's going to be uh nice to start seeing some development in there and getting the streets where they need to be uh, i think the applicant has uh done what he needed the private to do. neighborhood i think the applicant has done what he needed to do uh to uh, uh, uh to get within his uh setbacks uh, he's well within his rights to do this, just as Mr. Stanley and Miss Stanley are welcome to come before us and improve their property. Um, so th they're they're all zoned in the same zoning. They all have the same opportunities there. So uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry that they're so upset about this. Uh, it does meet the requirements of the city, and they've they've come along and they've got their setbacks. They've got their. Uh, 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 I'm going to be here and talk. Um, cause please unmute me, and I'll just unmute myself. That's that's great. We're we're it's not going to help. Uh, well, it's right not, I'm like Mr. Stanley, you're out of order. Please, please. Yeah, I know I'm out of order, but you guys. Please. So I'll just. Wow. I'll just I'm taking help for you. Dana can, uh... Sorry, I apologize, Chair. Um... Okay, I think we can continue. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Seifert, uh, I, I don't know if you were done or not. I, I don't know. I just, you know, there's so much divisiveness in this world. People are so on edge about everything. Uh, it's just a, uh, just a very rough time to be living through these days, especially with the current situation that's happening today. Um, it's unfortunate that uh, uh, Mr. Stanley feels that he needs to, to do this uh, and to break into this meeting. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry that he feels that he's not being heard because he's definitely being heard. Uh, we've addressed everything that we have the power to address uh, from his concerns and the Stanley's concerns. Uh, we had another app, but we had another public comment uh, that was uh, concerned about the drainage, and we definitely 
brought that on the agenda and we, we addressed that also. We are doing everything in our power to make sure that this is done towards the correct zoning and it's done correctly towards the city policies. That's the only power that we have. Uh, we, we don't make policy, but we, uh, we can certainly see that this is meeting all of the current standards that the city sets for a building project of this uh, magnitude. So, uh, you know, it's unfortunate uh, that the neighbor is so upset about this, uh, but uh, the, the applicant is definitely within his rights to develop this project. And he had an opportunity in the last meeting and we addressed those, those items. They had an opportunity tonight We've addressed those items. So I, I do believe that we're listening. I do believe that we have listened to the uh, applicant. I believe we've listened to the neighbors. And I think that uh, I, I think that we're doing what we can with the power that we have. And uh, I think this is a good looking project. I think it's going to help that street. I actually think it's going to help the neighborhood. Uh, but uh, obviously that's that's not a uh, uh, that's my my opinion. Um, I'd like to thank the applicant for making those changes, and that's pretty much it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Schieffer. Uh Commissioner Dickerson. Yeah, I uh, I just want to uh, concur with uh, what the Commissioner Seifert said. I, I agree with everything that he said. I, um, I, I, I am sorry that uh, Mr. Stanley and Ms. Stanley uh, are upset by this. Um, I do feel like from the previous uh, session that we had and this one that the applicant has addressed the issues that we brought forth. Um, they, from the retaining wall, we, we've been covering that now uh, through staff and uh, through drainage, as well as the setbacks. Um, as Commissioner Seifert said, the, uh, the applicant does have a right, he's the property owner, to develop that property. And uh, I think that uh, this commission has done what it's could, it can to address the various concerns that have been brought up. Uh, the only concern that we that we have not been able to address, quite frankly, is parking issues. Um, but uh, th they have got the parking that is necessary for the for the project itself at this time. And uh, if if for some reason, and of course the the applicant has said that they they don't have a desire to uh, create additional dwelling units, but uh, if for some reason they did down the road, I'm no big fan of those. I mean, anybody else can tell you on on this commission. But the reality is that is a state-imposed uh, standard, and uh, we it is completely out of our control as to whether or not they decided to move down that road and the issues regarding parking and that sort of thing. We, all we can do is hope that the applicants is as good as their word, and that is not their intent. But uh, quite frankly, if they decided to do something else, then, then that is also their right. Um, once again, I, com I uh, concur with uh, Commissioner Seifert. Uh, this is a good project. And, and Chair Lopez, um, I think that uh, uh, they have addressed the various issues and I appreciate that. Um, and um, I haven't heard any additional issues that we have not addressed. Um, and uh, as someone who has regularly gone through that neighborhood, gone on that street uh, for a number of years, uh, I, I am aware of, of, the, uh, of the dynamics of, of that neighborhood. And, and the uh, dynamics of those streets. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to see that, that um, as Commissioner Seifert said, that, uh, that we're maybe we start the process of, uh, uh, of some of the pieces of the properties being uh, uh, rehabbed and remodeled. So, so I'm in favor of this project as it's been laid out to us. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Dickerson. Commissioner Blanco. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I was, you know, rather than repeating that what everybody said, I, I am in agreement with what uh, Commissioner Seifert and, and Commissioner Dickerson um, mentioned about the project. I think, you know, we've, we've looked at it a couple of times. We've certainly um, reviewed it closely and we've gotten good feedback from residents. And I think we've addressed it to the best of our ability and the, the applicant has done a good job of also addressing our comments. Um, you know, the, 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 I guess the one item out there that, that I had a question on was the parking, but as I understand it, the project is providing the required parking on site. Um, and so there's, there's no apparent uh, issue there. Um, offsite parking is, is something that's out of our control and, and we can't do a whole lot about, but, uh, 
that they're doing their their part on site, and that's all we can really ask. Um, so anyhow, I, I, I think the project does uh, look good, and I think it does help that that area to hopefully move in the direction to to redevelop and um, and make it a better a better community for everybody. So um, and that's about it. I, I do support the project. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Blanco. Anyone else looking to make a comment, motion, or um, any other discussion? I, I agree with the other commissioners. The applicant did make the changes that the commission asked. I know that it's difficult for property owners to see change, but this is an improvement. They are improving the property. And for that reason, I'm in support of the project. Thank you, Commissioner Hernandez. Um, we'll entertain a, a motion. I can make the motion. I move, are we ready? Yeah. Okay. I move that we approve the Gonzalez Multifamily Development Plan Development Permit and Conditional Use Permit at 403 West Street. Can we have a second? I second. It's been, it's been moved by Commissioner Hernandez, seconded by Commissioner Seifert. May you please have a roll call. Commissioner Hernandez? Aye. Commissioner Seifert? Aye. Commissioner Blanco? Aye. Commissioner Dickerson? Aye. Chair Lopez? Aye. Uh, motion carries 5-0. And uh, I do want to add that uh, any planning commission decision is can be appealed to the city council. Uh, there, uh, I believe the instructions are on the website. So that's for Mr. Stanley and, and Mrs. Stanley. Uh, so uh, we, we do not have the final say. These can be appealed to the city council. Uh, congratulations to Mr. Smith and, and for you and your client. Uh, good luck. Thank you. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to other business. Do we have any oral reports from the Planning Commission or staff? Chair? Yes. I, I just had a, uh, it, it's more of a, a question and possibly an, uh, an agendized item down the road. Um, but uh, I, I know that uh, Commissioner Blanco and I have both brought up the, uh, the issue regarding um, uh, 166 and 135. Um, my last communication with, uh, uh, with, um, uh, with Sean was that uh, someone in public works was gonna be starting to look into that and that was late November and so um, I know that there were, I, I requested perhaps a time study, um, a time travel study of some kind. I would kind of either like an update or a, a meeting or, or something that just kind of keeps the ball rolling and that we actually have some, some movement going on. So that, that, that's more or less a request maybe that we have a, uh, uh, an agenda item down the road here. Okay. All right, uh, Dana's on and she has her hand up. Uh, uh, Dana? Yeah, thank you. Um, that was actually one of the items that I was gonna be updating your commission on tonight. Um, yeah, so uh, we are doing some, uh, we've been continuing to look into that particular topic. Uh, right now, public works and planning are working on co doing some coordination with Caltrans. And also um, we're looking into some of the studies that were completed as part of the downtown streetscape update and the downtown specific plan. Uh, there were some traffic studies, I believe, that were completed. And so Mr. Ng is um, working on that. And I, I think um, our plan is probably to bring this to you at a study session. Um, and we're looking, I think, sometime in March to do that. So we have been working on that and it's a priority. Thank and then- you. Thank you, Dana. Okay, you're welcome. Dana, and the, uh, or uh, Chair Lopez, I had to, uh, at our one of our meetings, I had suggested that maybe we can make it a joint meeting with uh, City Council and put a little bit more um, behind it and, and let Caltrans know that you know that that it's not just Planning Commission interested, but also Council and and I assume that they would be interested. So um, I don't know, Dana, if that's been thrown out, if it's if it's been uh, proposed as a joint meeting with. Uh, with council and, and, and maybe bringing in uh, upper level staff from Caltrans to, to talk and present. So 
Um, just just wanted to mention that and see if, if there had been any contact with council regarding that. At this point, we're sort of in the earlier stages of looking at some past studies and talking to Caltrans um, at our staff level, and so we haven't yet um, reached out to the council. Um, I can circle back with Mr. Ng on that, but I think our plan at this point is to bring it in March as a study session um, and then look at the for the next steps, maybe we could do that. But um, at this point, I think the best course of action, because some work has already been done previously, is for us to look at that, get into our contact at Caltrans, um, and then start off with that information. Okay. All right. Um, and, I, and I know we do have a, um, well, do we have a, we have a downtown? Revitalization committee meeting next week, um, but uh, I don't know if that might be appropriate to bring up at that point. I, I really don't know what the agenda is. Uh, I see if there is any interest in in the develop. Well, I guess there isn't a developer yet, but uh, maybe it is a, a good time to bring that up. Never mind. <laughs> uh, any other any other uh, reports from commission or staff? I don't know if this is appropriate, Chair. Are you, are you on that committee, downtown revitalization? Yes, sir. Um, one, one thing that I'm a little concerned with is, and I don't know if this is the right forum, but, um, you know, we have a lot of very small businesses on a shoestring down there. And when we do revitalize, we do need to keep an eye open out for where they're going to open up their businesses and how we're going to keep those small businesses that are here now struggling. If we build these multi-million dollar buildings, high rises, they're not going to be able to afford the rent. So um, I guess when we do the revitalization, I think it's imperative that we think about our, uh, our businesses that are here now, and we, we really have to allow a space for them because I don't think that with the costs of the way that things are nowadays, I don't think they'll be able to afford the leases or the rents in the new buildings. Um, it's just something I was thinking about the other day, so I thought I'd bring it up. Yeah, and I, I think, uh, I think uh, uh, once they have a developer, uh, selected, which I think it's still some time. Maybe Dana, Dana's raised her hand. Maybe she, she, Dana, is that something? You can, uh, do you have a timeline on when, when the the committee is looking at actually, or the city? It will go to city council before they select somebody, correct? Yeah. So my hand was raised just to provide. I just wanted to let you know I have a few more updates to provide. Um, okay. I don't have anything to add on um, Commissioner Seifert's comment, though. Okay. Uh, what? Well, uh, I'll find out and I'll give, uh, when we have our next meeting, maybe we'll, we'll, uh, we'll toss that out there. And if it's appropriate, maybe they'll chime in on, on maybe that's, I know that was one of the directions that was given to, to the, Excuse me, Mr. Uh, Chair. Uh, Hi, yes. this is Heather Whittem, Assistant City Attorney. I'm very sorry to interrupt you. I just want to caution you that this is not on our agenda tonight, a discussion about downtown revitalization and and the projects there so we really can't be giving you any direction to take back to the committee um, uh, obviously you 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 know I, I think you you have an idea as to what some concerns might be and those I'm sure are things you guys will be talking about but we really can't uh, give any direction this evening or really have much any more deliberations on that just because it's not on the agenda okay got it thank you Heather. got it um, Okay, Dana, sorry, go, go ahead uh, with the other reports. Okay, thank you. Um, I just, since we're now in the new year, I just wanted to go through um, some of our upcoming hearing dates. So our study session tomorrow um, has been canceled. And then we also do not have any items scheduled for January 20th for that hearing. And so um, I would recommend we go ahead and cancel that hearing as well. We just, I don't, I checked with staff and we're not going to have any items for that day. Um, and also we do not have anything for the study session on the 21st either. Um, on February 5th, we're going to be meeting to um, complete the election of the planning commission officers for this year. So we'll have that item on February 5th. And then as we were just discussing, I did just want to let you know that there is that downtown committee meeting that's scheduled for next week on the 13th at 1.30 p.m. And there's essentially been two finalists for um, that downtown uh, request for proposals that have been selected, and there's going to be a presentation given 
um, from those two development groups. And that's all I have tonight for the update. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. Dana, can I ask you, Dana, was, is that going to be a, is that going to be an online Zoom uh, sort of thing or in chambers or where? Yes, it's going to be a webinar, the same format that we use for our, our planning commission meetings. And um, I can send you um, a link to that webinar if you'd like. We can send that out. If you could, I'd, I'd like an invite for that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to get an invite too, Dana, if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll okay. send that to all of you. And, and I'm Great, sorry, what you. was the date, date and time again? It's January 13th at 1.30 p.m. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right. uh, any, any other um, comments from staff or, I'm sorry, reports from staff or, or planning commissioners? <laughs> Chairman Lopez, um, I have a little bit of a concern, that meeting that we've been talking about on the 13th. Um, we can't have a majority of the Planning Commission there participating unless we notice it um, as, a, as a meeting. So perhaps when Dana sends the information, she can ascertain whether that's going to be an issue or not. Well, they'll be on as attendees as opposed to panelists, correct? Does that make a difference? Well, if you participate in the meeting, it, it could create a a Brown Act uh, violation because there's a majority of you there participating. But if we're not participating, if we're just listening, Heather? Yeah, if you don't participate in any way, um, then I believe there's an exception for publicly noticed meetings of other bodies, but you wouldn't be able to participate in any way if that was the way you went. Okay. I think it might be safer to... to I, I know they do them for the, the, the town hall meetings that we have. You guys let a notice out for uh, there may be more than three a quorum or something to that effect. Is that something we can do? Well, even even though they're not going to be participating. I'm sorry, Chairman Lopez. What was your question? My, my question is uh, for the town hall meetings that we have, for example, the H2A meetings that we were having a couple of years ago with all the commissioners there. Uh, I, I guess we weren't really participating. It was more for information. Well, if, the, if the commissioners are on as attendees and not participating in this meeting, uh, maybe we can still send out a notice that whatever that notice you folks send out to, uh, to uh, I guess, announce that there could be a quorum present, even though they won't be participating. Well, there is an exception under the Brown Act for the attendance of majority of, the, of a body if it's at another open and notice meeting of another body that you can attend, but again, uh, you can't discuss amongst yourselves or um, participate in the meeting. So if you wanted to participate, we'd have to notice it as a meeting of the Planning Commission. If you are just attending as participant attendees and not participating, then I think you'd be fine under that Brown Act exception. Okay. And, and, and I guess that's the other question is, I mean, is, is there any is there any downside to noticing it? And then that way gives all of us the option to be there and to ask questions if we, if, if, if we come across a question we want to ask. I mean, is there any downside to going ahead and noticing it? Well, I don't know that it was the intent of the city to have, in essence, like a joint meeting or to have your body participating in that meeting. I, I, okay. I don't know. Yeah, in the past, Dana, I think you guys typically just run it. Uh, the attendees or the panelists are, are are the only ones that take part of the meeting, and, and I don't I don't even recall if we really had that many attendants, attendees. Yeah, Chair Lopez, that that's correct. We don't typically have a lot of attendees come to these um, meetings, but um, they are. This one is going to be run as a public webinar, so we will have a, a number of panelists, and then there will be, it'll be open for attendees to come in as well. Okay. So then you can go that route, but don't say anything. I guess, right? I just want to make, make sure nobody gets in trouble. All right, so we'll go on as, a, everybody can go on as attendees, I guess, in, uh, for this noticed meeting. Uh, so any other questions or comments? If not, I think we're at a adjournment. Any other questions or comments? 
Okay, we're adjourned at 722. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have a good weekend. All right, good evening, guys. Good evening.